and I love all these new statues that I got. Whoa. Hey, man, what are you doing? You got to get those idols out of here, man. Bro, what are you talking about? They're just statues. Look, Jesus. I don't know, man. Looks like idolatry to me. Well, today I'm going to answer the question, is it wrong that Catholics have statues and is it idolatry? All right, stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Joshua here, AKA the Catholic Marine. So I just want to take a quick second to say thank you for checking out this video. Please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share this video across all of your platforms. All right, so why do Catholics possess statues in their churches and in their homes? I mean, doesn't the Bible condemn them? Well, many people that make that claim are referring to Exodus chapter 20, verses four through five, where it says, you shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Now, as a Catholic, I 1000% agree with that, of course, absolutely. But here's the kicker. God forbade the worship of statues. He did not forbid the religious use of statues. In fact, God Almighty actually commanded their use in religious settings. Here, I'll show you. God told the Israelites not to build idols to worship in Exodus 20. However, just five chapters later in Exodus 25, God commanded them to build the Ark of the Covenant. Now the Ark of the Covenant was a sacred chest made of acacia wood and was covered with pure gold inside and out. And on top were two huge angels called cherubims that were placed there to protect the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible says. This was the most holy object to the Israelites in the Old Testament. And inside of the Ark of the Covenant, it contained the two tablet stones with the Ten Commandments on them, the gold jar of manna, and Aaron's staff. Another example is in Numbers chapter 21, verses eight and nine, the Israelites were in the wilderness and they were complaining about not having any food to eat or anything to drink and that they actually hated the manna that God had provided for them. So God sent poisonous snakes among the people and many of them were bitten and died, the Bible says. So of course, <laughs> they came back to Moses and pleaded with him to have God take the snakes away. It was then that God instructed Moses to create a bronze snake and put it on a pole to have the Israelites look at whenever they got bit again. And so whenever they did get bit again, they would be healed just by looking at the bronze snake. Now, God was ultimately the one who healed the Israelites whenever you know, they got bit. But in this instance, he used something that was made by man to heal others. Now, I'll, I'm gonna pivot a little bit and say that anyone who is a Catholic says that you know they worship statues, well, then obviously they are wrong. Now, as we read in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse four, King Hezekiah had destroyed the bronze snake because the people began to worship and offer sacrifices to it. So yes, statues or created things can be problematic if they are worshiped. However, statues in and of themselves are not evil, as we see in Exodus and Numbers. Another biblical proof text showing that God allows things to be built in a religious setting is in the first temple in Jerusalem, the one that was built by King Solomon. Now, God said to King David, your son, whom I will place on your throne, will build the temple to honor my name. And inside the temple, it had two cherubims that were 15 feet high both the panels and the crossbars the bible says were decorated with carved lions oxen and cherubim above and below the lions and oxen were wreath decorations so the temple had all these statues and images in it and of course the ark of the covenant was you know in the temple now i know some of you might be thinking well you know that was king solomon who did that and we all know how he turned out to be you know etc etc now Although King Solomon may have turned away from God at the end of his life, God was still pleased and even approved 
the work of the temple that King Solomon had created, saying, For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. Nowhere does God ever chastise King Solomon for having the statues or the images in the first temple. Again, some people may say, well, that was the Old Testament. We're living in the New Testament era or something of that sort. But if somebody wants to accuse Catholics for having statues citing the Old Testament in Exodus 20, then we can show from the Old Testament that not every statue is sinful. Again, it was the worship and offering sacrifices to the statues or images that were bad, not the statues or images in and of themselves. Another objection that Catholics often hear is that the Bible says you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on earth or in the sea. Now, the reason for this was because no one had seen the face of God. He commanded this because he didn't want the Israelites to start coming up with their own ideas about what God looked like. But you and I both know that this has now happened through the incarnation of the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ. In John's Gospel, it says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We now know what God looks like. Therefore, we are no longer in danger of incorrectly making a false image of God and since, you know, we are the body of Christ, statues of saints are permissible to as well. Okay, now that we've gone over the scriptural aspect of statues, I just want to touch on a few reasons about why Catholics have statues that even give them veneration. These wonderful creations have been given to us to bring our hearts and minds to God. Whenever we attend church, right? whatever your religion is, Catholic, non-Catholic, our hearts and minds should automatically shift and focus on God, correct? I mean, the power, the glory, the majesty of God is something that we should always acknowledge throughout our life, right? Especially while in church, because I mean, that's where we go to worship Him. Humans are physical and tangible creatures, okay? We use our senses to experience the world around us. Those statues and images aid us in bringing our hearts and mind to God whenever we go and worship Him. I mean, which church setting would have you sense God's presence more? This or this? This or this? Yes, it's true. God is everywhere at all times, all the time, everywhere. However, there is something unique and significant when you know, we're at a place where we can use our senses to understand, gaze, and contemplate the majesty of the Almighty by using statues, pictures, and paintings. I mean, we have statues all over this country here in the United States of all kinds of important figures from the past, people that have fought in wars or fought for civil rights, or even past presidents. So wouldn't it seem more fitting to have statues then of spiritual figures that have already fought the good fight and received a crown of never ending glory so we can look to as an example? Lastly, I want to go further and explain why Catholics give veneration to statues and images. You see, those statues that Catholics have are a representation of what they are. When I see one of Jesus, right? like the statue that I'm holding here in my hands, it automatically takes my mind to, well, Jesus. Now, the statue in and of itself does not have any special power, right? I mean, it's just a statue. However, since it is made to look like Christ, and since I honor and love Christ, I will treat it with respect and hang on to it and, you know, keep it on my own so that way I can always focus and, you know, contemplate on Jesus Christ. It's analogous to this. I remember when I was in Afghanistan, right, when I was on deployment, guys would have pictures of their wives or girlfriends, you know, in their wallet. And, you know, every once in a while, they would pull it out, give it a kiss, maybe stare at it and put it back. Now, when that would happen, no one would say, bro, what are you doing? That's just a picture of your wife. That's not actually your wife. What did, why'd you just kiss that? No, of course not. Everyone knows that they are kissing what represents their wife or girlfriend. It's not actually her. Now, I love my wife. And I love Jesus. 
it's the same thing. It's no different, right? Now, what about Catholics kneeling before statues? Now that absolutely has to be idolatry, right? Well, it's all about one's intention, all right? That is what makes all the difference, okay? If somebody has the intent to pay homage or respect to something, then it's not wrong versus they have the intent to worship whatever they kneel or bow to. And if they do, then yes, it is wrong and sinful. I'll give you some examples. When a man proposes to his girlfriend, he gets on one knee, not because he's worshiping her, but out of respect, you know, we get from the old custom, right? That's why he does that. And in East Asia, people will give a slight bow when they meet somebody of a higher status out of respect. When they bow before them, are they worshiping them? No, of course not. Again, it's only out of high regard that they have for them is why they give the slight bow. Again, it's, I'm not trying to pre myself, but I'm just trying to show you that it's all about your intention when you perform these acts. Joshua from the Old Testament fell to his face before an angel and King Solomon bowed to his mother Bathsheba whenever she entered, to, whenever she entered the room in his presence. Again, both of these biblical examples are displays of reverence and respect. It is possible to bow and kneel before something as long as your heart and your intentions are in the right place. Okay. If you believe Catholics are wrong for having statues or religious pictures, I pray that God touches your heart so you can understand and appreciate the beauty of the Catholic art that has been made for us and created for us. All right, before I go, I'll leave you with this. Remember, the most important weapon you can take in battle is the most holy rosary. God bless, Godspeed, and simplify.